church. Let's all stand up. I'm calling everyone who's outside. Let's about to start. Let's all high five at least 10 people in this place as we start our service today. Amen. Let's praise God. We're going to fill this place with praise and worship to our King. No way. 
one for God today? Who woke up today ready to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Oh, come on. Come on. My grandma can move better than you. Come on. Let's go. Over up my soul. Sing. Love her up. Hey, hey. Love her up my soul. God today. I don't think you can hear me. Who's here are ready to praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Because we praise a God who is alive. The tomb is empty. Do you see what I see, church? The tomb is empty. Hallelujah. Let's praise Him today. What I see And I see lightning I hear thunder Something stirring Six feet under And he's coming back to life again I believe there's about to be Another resurrection Yeah, I believe there's about to be another resurrection Here we go church Come alive Wake up sleeper He is risen And we are risen with Let's go! And hallelujah, it is finished. Yes, see the great nobody in it. Death is coming back to life again. I believe there's about to be another resurrection. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Come alive. Wait. 
that you have done you have been faithful you've been good to us and there's nothing there's nothing we could have done to deserve it but freely you give it we want to give you glory today I want to invite you today church 
May we not have any reservations today. Give him all the glory and the honor today. Let's lift up our voices. Let's lift up our hands. 
Throughout our lives, oh God, we give you the glory and the praise. No other name be lifted up. No other name be magnified. No other name, oh Lord, be enthroned in this place. For you are the same God of yesterday, today, and forever. Your faithfulness transcends every generation, oh God. Your goodness, oh God, has been faithful, oh God. Your goodness, oh Lord, has been there since the very beginning. Lord, we, even though we are unfaithful, you remain faithful, oh God. And so God, we praise you today and we honor you today, oh God, with all that we have, oh Lord. We praise you. With all that we have, we honor you, oh Lord. Be enthroned in this place, oh God, as we celebrate 24 years of your goodness, 24 years of your faithfulness, oh God. We will not be here without your grace. We would not be here, oh God, without you, oh Lord, sustaining us, going before us, behind us, beside us, within us, oh Lord. You, oh Lord, are the only reason why we are standing here today. It is not by mind nor by power, but by your spirit, oh God. And so, Lord, we praise you and we honor you today, oh Lord. All the honor, all praise, all majesty belongs to you alone. And it is true, oh God. It is true, Lord. To you be the glory, the honor, and the praise. Be enthroned today. Be God in this place. We invite you. Do what only you can do. We honor you today, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Let me pray for our tithes and offerings real quick. God, thank you for your goodness and faithfulness in our lives. We pray, O oh God, oh God, for our tithes and offerings. May you bless this, O oh God. May you use this for the advancement of your kingdom. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise the Lord. Man, I am so grateful that you guys, all of you, the family and friends and visitors, we thank you for coming here to celebrate with us our 24th year anniversary. God is so good. You know, um, I don't want to hold things back. But uh, it can be very emotional. And when I get emotional, I take, every, I take all the minutes. And, you know, there's so much. There's going to be numbers here today and special pro, a special program. So uh, uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and read what I wrote here about the history, the short history of Shepherd's Pasture Assembly. 
and I'm going to go ahead and read it because if I just say it from my heart, it'll take an hour. <laughs> Some say, Pastor, why do you always sometimes read your notes when you preach? You know why? Because if I don't, my notes keep me on track. Because if I step out of my notes, for sure, it's not going to be a 30-minute, 30 35-minute sermon. It will be my natural one-hour sermon. So it's okay. So I, I got to keep on track by reading my notes. As we celebrate our 24th church anniversary, we look back with gratitude at our uh, at how Shepherd's Pastor Assembly began and how far God has brought us. Okay. It all started 2000 as a humble home Bible study group in National City, San Diego, with just eight worshipers. Okay. But uh, it's not in my notes, but eight worshipers is because we, we, we were all in one church and this church kind of um, um, broke apart. And many of the members went to different churches, but there was a few that wanted to stick together. They didn't want to go to any church because they've established this connection with one another. So they started a Bible study. And that was that time when I came back from the Philippines for one year of mission trip. And they said, hey, uh, Brother Noel, can you lead this Bible study since we, we broke apart? I said, sure. Um, I'll lead this Bible study. Okay. What brought us together in those early days was a deep hunger for God's presence and a shared vision to see his love and grace spread to those in need of healing and hope. Our church name, Shepherd's Pastor Assembly, was inspired by uh, Psalms 23, where Jesus, the good shepherd, provides green pastures, still waters, and safety for all his sheep. You know, um, another, it's not in my notes again. See what happens when I'm not reading my notes. I did ask the Lord, Lord, why shepherds pastures send me? Well, he said in, 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 in a different way, he said, you're going to be a place where the, our motto, where the weary will find rest. You're going to be a place wherein many that I'm going to be bringing to your church will be hurting. And sure enough, when I asked, Lord, what do you mean hurting? I mean, everyone's going to be hurting. But, and then said, watch. And in the first two years, I, was, I realized that the, Lord, that, that people, the people that the Lord was bringing were people that had cancer. People that were, you know, majority cancer. And, the, and, and another, person, another, another group of people that God was bringing to church were people that were in the verge of divorce or just divorce or struggling with their marriage. So those were the two types of groups that the Lord was bringing in the first two, two years. People that had cancer, just diagnosed of going through chemotherapy and people that were, uh, their, their marriage were, were, were being destroyed. So what, what a powerful place to be. Is, is to be in a church where you have these people and uh, the Lord started healing them, okay, miraculously. Okay. So I got lost now here. We long to create a place where w the weary souls could find rest, healing, and the, and the comforting touch of the Holy Spirit. Little did we know that what began as a small Bible study would become a growing community of believers passionate about sharing the gospel and being a refuge for the brokenhearted to those who are physically hurting. With the love of God flowing in our ga gatherings and empowered by the Holy Spirit, our vision expanded. We moved beyond the four walls of our Bible study to reach out to the wider community Shepherd's Pastor Assembly was officially born. Shepherd's Pastor Assembly, or we call lovingly SPA, okay, is a self-governing, self-supporting, and self-propagating church. Over the years, we have seen God's hand at work in remarkable ways. The power of prayer, 
has been a cornerstone of our church growth and impact. Whether in times of joy or in seasons of trial, we have always sought the Lord in fervent prayer, with fervent prayer, believing in the promise, promises of Matthew 7, verse 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened to you. And that's our theme of our anniversary is ask. Ask, seek, and knock. Okay? Unleashing the power of prayer. This year, our theme for the anniversary is ask, seek, and knock. It serves as a reminder that God's call, God's, God calls us not just to pray in times of need, but to continually seek his will, knock on the doors of opportunity he sets before us, and believe that he will answer. Stepping into this new season of ministry challenges us to pray bold prayers. Trust God for even greater things and unleash the full power of prayer in our lives, in our church, and those who need God's supernatural intervention. We give all glory to God for his faithfulness these past 24 years. He has brought us through times of blessings and challenges, always leading us to the new to us to new green pastures. This is our seventh move. From the very beginning we started this church, we moved seven times. So I pray that uh, if we ever move again, it will be the last. You know, Praise the Lord. But the beautiful thing about this church is even wherever we move, there is less than zero, one percent that would leave the church. Usually there's about an average of 15 to 20 percent of people would leave if a church moves to another venue just because people want to stay where they are comfortable but the joy of this church is so re the relationship that we have we're a family amen so if i go to minnesota will you come with us <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> okay So I got lost again. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Today we celebrate not just our past, but also the future that God has in store for SPA. As we continue to unleash the power of prayer, knowing that God will open doors beyond what we can imagine. As we move forward, may we stay rooted in the word of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, and united in the power of intercession. Together, let us trust that God will continue to guide SPA as a beacon of light and hope not only in San Diego, but around the world. Amen. As little as we are, we have been supporting, uh, I don't know, about 13 missionaries. You know, if there's one fund that does not go down in our church, it's the missions fund and the benevolent fund. The benevolent, benevolent fund is almost like a... Um, a, a, a jar of clay. It never runs dry or a jar of oil. No matter how much we tap into it to help people, it just never goes down. As well as the missions fund. So the Lord desires that we send people. Amen? Praise the Lord. So for those who may not know me, I'm Pastor Noel Monzon, Senior Pastor of this church. Amen. Let me give you one more story that's not here. <laughs> you know, um, my desire when I came here was that I was just going to come, when I came here, before we began this church, I just finished one year of doing missions in the Philippines. I decided to come back here just to finalize my paperwork because I felt that the Lord wanted me to completely stay in the Philippines. That's why when I came back, I pretty much quit being a respiratory therapist, left UCSD, left Sharp, left Scripps. I was working in all those places. So I said, I'm going back to the Philippines. Um, but you've been there for one year. No, yeah, but now I know that I'm going to be going. I'm going to be staying there for good. And that's when the church broke apart. And, and, and fast forward, to just uh, shorten the story, 
the group said, hey, Noel, while you're still here in, in the in States, can you lead this Bible study? Sure. So while I was leading it, I was taking care of papers because I, I, deci- I decided to go back to the Philippines. And then after that, uh, um, when I was pretty much ready to go back, um, one of the members of my Bible study said, hey, uh, can I challenge you? I said, what? Uh, what challenge? Since if you're leaving, you're going to leave us as orphans. So can, I, uh, can you please pray that the Lord will provide someone to lead this Bible study if you do leave so we're not going to be, uh, you know, just left without a leader? I said, sure, I'll pray for that. That's, that's fair. Until now, I'm still asking God to provide someone to pray. <laughs> He did not call. <laughs> See, when you think that you heard from the Lord, but you're seeking the Lord, watch. Because he'll say, oh, yeah, but my will is that you stay. So I, I thought I was going back, but you got to keep seeking God. Okay? Because if you seek God, then you're in good ground. Okay? I think I'm not relieving here. At 24 years, I'm, I'm, I think uh, the Lord said stay. So we have a speaker here. You know who Brother Freddie is. He's been around, and, you know, we've been, been asking, Lord, 24th anniversary, who would be? And there are people that in, that's in my mind that are awesome to speak today. But the Lord impressed upon me again, Pastor Freddie. And for those of you who may not know him, um, let me give you a little info about Pastor Freddie, okay? Pastor Freddie, okay? Pastor and teacher, Freddy Ramirez, found, founded and leads Spirit House Ministries in Florida. He travels as a passionate revivalist. His heart is about revival. Bringing individuals and communities closer to God through powerful encounters with the Holy Spirit. So he's all about the Holy Spirit. His ministry focuses on prophetic teaching, spiritual transformation, and helping believers develop a deeper, more intimate relationship with Jesus. Okay. In addition to his revival work, Pastor Freddie oversees Spirit House Ministries virtual school. Okay, online school, which seeks to train and equip believers through interactive classes, prayer teams, specialized workshops, and one-on-one mentorship. And now is the host of the TV show in ISN. If you don't know what ISN means, it's called It's Supernatural Network. Okay. It's called Heaven Come. That's the title of this um, show that he's going to host. Heaven Come under ISN. His students come from all backgrounds worldwide. Okay. United by their desire to experience God's supernatural move. Hundreds, if not thousands, of students have already enrolled in his classes. Through his teachings and spiritual guidance, Pastor Freddie continues to inspire many to live a life of faith, purpose, and devotion to God. The objective, the science and wonders, is a means to the objective that he has. And that objective is that you may know and have this beautiful relationship with God the Father. Amen. So without further ado, I'd like to call on pastor, teacher, revivalist, Brother Freddie. Should we use this blue one? There you go. Good morning. How are we doing today? Amen. It is such a blessing to be here. I want to, first of all, thank all of you guys for having me again. It is always a pleasure to be back with my family here in San Diego. And listen, uh, I remember last time I came here, um, you know, I spoke here as well. But then we also went to a Bible study. Pastor Noah asked me to come in and speak at a Bible study. And there was a lot of great food. And, <laughs> and once there's such great food, you become family to me. <laughs> Amen. And so it's such a pleasure to be here. It is also such a joy and a pleasure 
to be here to celebrate 24 years of ministry. That is an accomplishment, isn't that? It is absolutely amazing. 24 years, and if you know anything about ministry, ministry is not easy. Ministry is not, you know, sometimes people think, oh, you know, all, all these ministers, all they make money, all they do is just take your money. If you want to make money, ministry is not the place <laughs> to make money. Ministry comes with a lot of sacrifice and many, a lot, a, many of the sacrifices that we as leaders make, especially financially, comes out of our own pocket. Amen. I wish God would give us a, a money tree in our backyard where we can fund the ministry. But many times it comes from our own sacrifice. And so I want to really first take the time to honor the servant and the men of God that God has really used to guide this ministry for 24 years because it is not easy. Let me tell you, you sit here. You enjoy this wonderful atmosphere. You enjoy this worship. You enjoy the, the, the air conditioning. Amen. We thank God for air conditioning. You enjoy having a good sermon preached to you. You enjoy the encouragement every single week. But let me tell you, it comes out of a place of sacrifice and devotion. So could we honor, can we just take two minutes to honor the man of God, Pastor Noel, for the sacrifice that he has made, for his obedience, for his decision to say, yes, God, I'm not going to go to the Philippines. If you need me here in the States, I will serve you wherever you want me to go. Can we give a hand? For the life of Pastor Noel, for saying yes to the call of God to leave SPA. It is absolutely not easy. I usually meet many people, as Pastor Noel said, that, you know, I, I, I train, I love training and equipping people. Um, not just for the work of the, well, to me, ministry is not just inside the four walls it is also outside of the four walls as well and when we meet people who are excited to be part of the five-fold ministry they get excited they get fired up and after a year I find out if they're really called after they face some trials and tribulations and so I can tell you it is absolutely not easy so as you eat I'm sure there's going to be some really good food I've tried some of your great Filipino food last time I was here. Uh, my favorite dessert, if I remember the name correct, it was Baku Pandan. Is that correct? Bu Buku Pandan. Oh, man. I felt the presence of God when I took a, a bite. <laughs> it was just so amazing. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be a lot of great food and uh, uh, today, but as you eat of the food, don't forget to be grateful. Not just for the food. I know that's easy. But don't, you, don't forget to be grateful, but I want you to go shake Pastor Noel's hand and say thank you for everything that you do. Find his wife. I don't know where she's at. She's probably serving in the back somewhere in the children's ministry. Find his wife. Because how many of you guys know it is not easy being a pastor's wife? It is not easy deciding I'm going to stand with the men of God. Y'all are taking my husband away from me, but I'm going to accept that sacrifice so that he can serve the people of God. It is absolutely not easy. So take the time to thank both of them. And uh, for all the sacrifice that they do, amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. So let's get with on with today. Again, this morning, I have the great privilege on speaking to you about prayer and about intercession. 
Now, I absolutely love prayer. Prayer, I love what Pastor Nero said, that prayer is the cornerstone of this ministry. Prayer is the cornerstone of my life. Without prayer, I can absolutely do nothing. Without prayer, I'm not able to be connected to God. Um, and, and, and many times we think that the reason why we pray is so that God will give us the blessings that he has for us. But the truth is, we don't pray so that God will give us blessings. Whatever God has promised you, he will give it to you whether you pray or not. Did you know that? Why? Because he is a keeper of his word. And so if God has promised you a blessing, he's going to give it to you, not because you deserve it, not because you are good, and definitely not because you worked hard for it, but because he is a keeper of his word. So we don't pray because we want to receive the blessings of God. God commands us to pray so that we can become the person that will steward the blessings well. There are many people that God will give you a tremendous blessing. There are many of you here that have amazing promises from God. And I'm telling you, they are wonderful promises. And bet to sure that the Lord will be faithful to keep his word with you. But I need to ask you this this morning. If God were to bless you with the breakthrough and the promise that he has said he will give you, do you have the capacity to steward your gift well? Do you have the capability? Oh, it's easy to say, oh, yes, Lord, give me blessings, give me money, give me finances. But what would you do with those finances? What would you do with the gifts that God has given you? I know many people that want to be a great prophet and want to prophesy, and, and I love that. I love prophesying. I'm the kind of guy, I could prophesy literally for five hours straight, seven hours straight, and I've done it many times before. But if God were to give you a prophetic gift, will you use that gift to boast about how great you are or to lead people to the Lord? This is why prayer is so important. Because prayer keeps us in the foundation of Christ. But this morning, I want to go a little bit further than that. I want to talk about intercession. Now, I want to quickly just ask this. How many intercessors wave at me do we have here this morning? You tell me, Freddie, I, I, I know God has called me to be an intercessor. There's like one and a half, I think. <laughs> okay, there's, there's a couple of you. How many mothers we have here? Raise your hand. Let me tell you, if you, are a, if you are a mother, or for those of you guys that are expecting to be mothers, or will become parents at some day, whether you're a father and you're, and you're a mother, when your child becomes a teenager, you will receive the gift of intercession. Oh, man, God will work that gift of intercession in you. When you have your child say, Dad, Mom, I'm going out tonight, and it's a Friday night. And you're saying, who, who are you going out with? Oh, some friends from school. Do I know them? No. Man, God will lead you in that moment to go, Oh, shit, Jesus. Oh, shit, da -da 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 -da. Jesus. Help me keep my kids. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Each and every single one of us is an intercessor. Every single one of us are called to intercede. Now, I want to 
pray and ask the Holy Spirit to really begin to touch us as I begin to speak this message. So if you don't mind, would you just join me in a quick prayer? Holy Spirit, oh, we love you so much in this morning. We love you in this place. Lord, we give our hearts, we give our souls, and we give our minds to you. We say that all of our gifts, everything that we have, our voice, our skills, our ability, Lord, even our burdens, we surrender everything that we have to you. And Lord, we thank you for 24 years of SPA. And now, Lord, as we complete this chapter, as we complete this chapter of 24 years in this city, we ask you now, Lord, that you will fix our eyes on you so that we can see where you are taking us in the next 24 years of ministry. Father, because the plans that you have for this ministry are further down than just one generation. But SPA is called to be a multi-generational community. And so we ask you, Lord, that you will make us a community of intercessors that will be able to pray beyond our own personal needs, but will pray and partner with you for what you are doing in our future. And if you believe that your generations will be blessed, not just in your family, but also as a part of this community, SPA, I want you to give God the biggest amen that you are capable of this morning. Can we give God an amen? amen? Oh, I like you guys. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Listen, very quickly, we're going to talk about intercession for a couple of minutes. What is intercession. Prayer is very simple. Prayer is connection to God. But intercession is further than just prayer. Intercessor literally means standing in the place. We call it standing in the gap. But standing in the place of someone else praying for someone else. Now, intercession is not the sexiest ministry. Intercession is not the most popular ministry. If you were to ask people, oh, who wants to give announcements? Who wants to lead worship? Who wants to minister? Who wants to preach? Everybody will raise their head. Why? Because these are all ministries where you get people to look at you. But intercession means... That you pray in the place where no one is watching you. It is the place where it's just you and you and God alone. And you're not praying for your needs. And the problem that we have in the body of Christ is all we do is pray for our own needs. If I, I can imagine God <laughs> in heaven. When he hears us praise, all he hears is me, 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 Jesus. Jesus, me. I need you to provide for me. But look at me, God. Look at me, Jesus. And Jesus said, well, why don't you take your eyes off of your own knees for just a moment and learn to partner with me. You know, when Jesus was on this earth, he did a lot of amazing things. He prophesied, he healed the sick, he casted out demons, he discipled, he set the foundation for what we know as the church today. And when he ascended onto the earth, I'm sorry, when he ascended onto the Father, 
The Bible says that he gave us the keys and the authority of his ministry to us. But there's one ministry that he kept for himself. There's one ministry that he still does till this day. And that is intercession. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 34, and I'm just going to run through this quickly. It says, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting at the place of honor at God's right hand. And what is he doing? Pleading for you and me. So in this moment, as Jesus sits at the place of honor, he could be just taking it all in. He could just be just receiving glory. Yet Jesus has decided that he is going to be a full-time intercessor for you and me. And I don't know about you, but my life, the way that my life works, I need a full-time intercessor. I need all the prayer that I can get. And I'm thankful that Jesus is pleading for us. So Jesus is in heaven praying for us. And I wonder, I don't know what you guys think, but I know I have family members that have also passed away who love the Lord. I know, for example, my grandmother from my mom's side, Oh, man, she was a strong intercessor. And I think, it is my opinion, I think that she is, an, I think that Jesus had to set up a special kind of angels at the front gate to keep her away from him. Because if I know my grandmother, my grandmother would be pleading with Jesus, Jesus, my grandkids, are you looking at them? Are you taking care of them? I, I wonder, do you guys believe that our family members that have passed away are also pleading for us in heaven? I believe so. I remember this one particular time. This was many years ago. I just had finished preaching a sermon in a youth service. And I remember that the Lord spoke to me after the service was over, and he told me something very bizarre. Now, I am... I, I'm, an, I'm, the, I'm the first child of my family, of my mother and father, and I have one younger sister. And one day the Lord spoke to me and told me, Freddie, you have two brothers in heaven who are rooting for you. What? I have two brothers who are rooting for me? I remember I called my mom. I'm like, Mom, are there any uh, other children <laughs> You, you want to tell me about? She's like, no, no, you're my first son. I'm like, well, okay, did you have any miscarriages by any chance? And my mom told me, well, yeah, Freddie, you're actually technically my third child. Because before you, I had two miscarriages. And I was completely shocked by that. And so the Lord pleads for us. I believe that we have family members that are also pleading for us. And as amazing as that is, even though we can have family members, and I hear that especially in Miami, it's like, oh, I know my grandmother's praying for me in heaven. But the truth is, the ministry of the intercessor is not for our past relatives. The ministry of the intercessor is for those of us who are alive here on the earth. Amen. Because the Bible says that God does nothing without partnership. In other words, the way that God has decided to work is that he would not do anything on the earth if he does not have someone agreeing with him here. That means you and I are all called to be intercessors. God uses our prayers. In fact, there are many of you that are sitting 
in this room today because of someone's prayer. Listen, salvation doesn't just happen miraculously. We, we think, oh, I, got, I was walking the mall one day, and somebody approached me and started talking to me about Jesus. And I, I, I felt something inside of me stir up, and I gave my life to the Lord in that moment. And it was because of that evangelist that I am now with the Lord. Oh, no, 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 no. There was someone that prayed you into salvation. There was someone, it could have been a mother, it could have been an auntie, it could have been a friend, it could have been a co-worker, but you are here as a result of someone's prayer. How many of you guys know for a fact, you know that someone prayed you into salvation? Amen? There is someone that has prayed us all into salvation. Luke chapter 11 verse 5. It's the verse that I want to quickly read that teaches us about intercession. And like I said earlier today, intercession is simply deciding to stand in the gap for someone else. God will use our prayers so that he can make things happen on the earth. But there was one particular time where Jesus was with his disciples. And the disciples asked him, Jesus, will you teach us how to pray? And, and, and this is a quick little side note before I go there. We're not going to read that this entire chapter. But one thing that I always notice is people usually say, well, what is prayer? People say, prayer is talking to God. I don't like that one, if I'm really honest with you. Because anyone can talk to God. There's people that are always praying and talking to somebody. Prayer is connection to God. Let me give you a quick example. I can talk to this gentleman, but just because I talk to him doesn't mean that we're connecting. You know what we call that? Small talk. Oh, how are you? How are you doing? Are you doing good? How's the family? How's work? Yeah? 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 That's good. Did we connect? Absolutely not. Just because I gave you small talk doesn't necessarily mean that I'm connected with you. But we call this relationship. We call small talk relationship. Prayer is not just talking to God. Prayer is learning how to connect. You know what prayer is? I may not know you. I may not be able to understand you. But I am determined to make a, a bond with you. I am determined to be connected with you. That's what prayer is. Intercession comes once you have that connection. The problem with why many people do not intercede. It's because they didn't have a connection to God themselves. But once you connect with God, God will use you to pray. And it's amazing because they asked Jesus, Jesus, can you teach us to pray? He didn't say, oh, just talk to God. No, he said, pray like this. And it's not about a repetitive prayer, but it's about a way to connect to God. And as he continued to teach on intercession, and prayer, he taught us something very important. And I'm going to read this very quickly from um, Luke chapter 11, verse 5. It says this. Then, the teaching, then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me. How many of you guys have friends like that? <laughs> just don't, they just don't know how to stop, right? In the middle of the night, hey, what are you doing? Sleeping? Trying to rest? <laughs> Thank you. Call me tomorrow. Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night. 
and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, Jesus said, though he won't do it for his friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks finds. And everyone who knocks, the doors will be open. So this is a teaching about intercession. But there is a huge misconception about the power of intercession. We read this verse and we think, well, okay, intercession means that I need to keep on knocking and, 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 and crying out to God. And many times it is. Many times intercession means I'm going to commit to pray for you until two things. Now, very quickly, how do you know that your time to intercede for something is done? Number one, when you see the fruit. Or number two, when God has told you, and by either you discern it, you feel it in your spirit, but God has told you, yes, I have granted your prayer. And even though you may not yet see it, God already said that it is done. So when we receive that from God, what do we do? Do we keep on asking, oh, God, save him. And God told you, no, I have his salvation. Oh, God, save him. And God is like, I have his salvation. God, save him. This woman, uh, this man, I, I, I have his salvation. What do we do? We say, God, thank you. That's how we continue to, to praise. God, I thank you. Even though I'm not seeing the fruit yet, I thank you because you have already spoken it. And because you have spoken it, no demon in hell can touch him because you have promised his salvation. Amen? But there's something that's very powerful that Jesus teaches us here. He says this. He says, if you keep on asking, it will be given to you. And many of us think, that what Jesus is saying, that if you want to intercede, you have to persevere and persevere and persevere. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going until it happens. And that's not what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is giving us an illustration of how simple it is to get an answer from prayer. Jesus is saying that if even a person who does not deserve to get their answer prayer if they are persistent, they will receive their, their answer. How do I know this? And I'm, we're not going to go there, but if you want to write it down in your notes, you can. He gives the same teaching in chapter 18 of Luke, verse 1 through 7. And he gives the story of an us unjust judge. A judge that the Bible says, or at least according to the parable that Jesus was using, doesn't fear God, doesn't want to give people justice. But because this woman in this parable is persistent, the judge is like, let me just get this woman to shut up. She won't stop asking for me. Let me just grant her justice just so that she will stop. So what is Jesus teaching us? It's not that you have to always be super consistent. It's Jesus... What Jesus is trying to make a point here is he's saying even the unrighteous people will get an answer from God if they keep on being persistent. That means that God answers all prayer. Say with me, all prayer. Say with me, I, some of you guys didn't believe it. Say with me, all prayer. Well, I don't know, Freddie. Does God answer all prayer? Absolutely, he does. The problem is it may not be the answer you want. And, not, and it may not be in the timing that you want. Oh, man. Don't, I wish God was like a genie, right? 
You just rub it and he'll give you whatever you want. But he's not. He answers in his timing. In his way. But Jesus is teaching us something powerful. He's teaching us each and every single one of us re can receive an answer prayer if we decide to intercede. Even the unjust will receive an answered prayer if they keep on knocking. How much more are your prayers going to reach the throne of God? James chapter 5 says this, that the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. So if the persistent person will get an answer from God out of just his persistency, how much more will you receive your answer for being a righteous person? How are we righteous? By the blood of Jesus. Simply by the blood and the sacrifice of Jesus on the earth. It is because of him that we are able to receive righteousness. And part of righteousness is also understanding that God wants to answer your prayer. The reason why many of us deal and struggle with intercession is because we don't believe that God will answer our prayers. That's what we call Pastor Noel. Pastor Noel, I've been fasting in prayer, but can you pray? Why don't you believe that God hears you? In fact, why don't you believe that God wants to use you for intercession and prayer? And the last thing that I want to share, and I absolutely love this topic of intercession and prayer, and out of all the things that I love about intercession, it's prophetic intercession. I mean, I, 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 I'm a prophet in Everything that's prophetic, it just falls onto me. But prophetic intercession is absolutely powerful. What is the difference between intercession and prophetic intercession? When you are interceding, you are bringing your petition before God. And you're saying, God, I am praying for this person. I am praying for this person's salvation. I'm praying for this person's miracle. I'm praying for this person's healing. But now, God wants to upgrade you. And I want to say this to you, SPA. God wants to upgrade you to prophetic intercession. You know what the best part is? You don't have to be a prophet to do prophetic intercession. What is prophetic intercession? It's when you simply say, God, I'm not here with an agenda. I'm not here to ask you of anything. I'm here to be used by you to pray for whatever it is that you want me to pray for. Oh, let me tell you, that is a dangerous prayer to make. Because when you tell God, God, I'm available to pray, God will say, finally, okay, 3 a.m. in the morning. Good morning. Are you ready to pray? Uh, five more minutes. Come on. You said you were willing to pray. And what God will do is, God, as you begin to pray in the spirit, God will begin to give you things. I remember a couple of weeks back, we were just teaching on this topic in the school. And we were talking about prophetic intercession. And the next week after we had a class, there was a group of students that were testifying. They were saying, you know, Pastor Freddie, we were learning about prophetic intercession from your class. And when you begin to teach on this, I begin to do, I begin to pray in the spirit. And God began to have me pray for weird things. I began to pray for victims of human sex trafficking. That wasn't even in my mind. That was in class. When someone said that, another person said, what? 
the same thing happened to me. And then another person goes, wait, 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 what, for real? God told me the same thing. At the end of the total time of testimony, there were 20 people that that week were all praying for victims of human sex trafficking. The very next week in my city, someone who, who, who smuggles a victims got busted in my city. And, and that's, that's just what we know. Can you imagine the testimonies that we're not hearing? Then I, I grabbed that same teaching and I went on YouTube and I shared the same testimony. And I got comments. You can literally look it up on my YouTube. Comments. Wait, I was praying for the same thing. I was always doing prophetic intercession. Why? Because God will use your humanity to pray for what it is in his heart. Let me tell you, you can pray for whatever is in your heart, but why don't you give God the time to pray for what is in his heart? Amen? God wants to take you. God wants to upgrade you. God wants to use you. Many of us say, God, use me, send me. And God is saying, yes, wake up and pray. You want to you serve God? You want to be used in ministry? Learn to intercede by giving your humanity so that God can use you in the place of prayer. Come on, can we lift up our hands? I want to make a quick prayer right now for all of you guys that say, you know what, Freddie? I'm not going to do this just for the sake because of the teaching. I want to be used by God to intercede, to do prophetic intercession. If that is you, I want you not just to lift your hands. I also want you to stand to your feet right now. And we're going to give our, ourselves to God. We're going we're gonna to pray and give ourselves for that time of prophetic intercession. Come on, come on. Why don't you right there just repeat this quick prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father. Come on, say it like you mean it. Say, Heavenly Father. In this moment, I give myself to you to be used in the power of intercession. I promise to be used by you, to obey you when you ask me to pray, no matter the time, no matter the place, no matter the condition, no matter the circumstance. I give myself to the ministry of prayer and intercession. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. And if you believe that, give a strong hand to the Lord today. Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you all stand up? No, that's okay. I was just asking if you all stand up. Because if you did it, we'll do it again. Now is the time to start interceding. And God knows your heart. God knows what's going on in your life. But if you just go ahead and pray for others, that same anointing that God is going to use to touch those that you're praying for is going to touch your life, your health, whatever is going in your life. God knows. God said, I know your prayers before you even come to the prayer closet. I know all about you. But pray with me that the blessings will also be in your life. Amen? God's good. Okay. Conrad? Thank you, Pastor Freddie. Praise the Lord. Amen. amen How's everybody? Amen. Who's hungry? <laughs> We're not going to eat yet, though. <laughs> I, I want to say uh, we're put in a very, very interesting position. Mm -hmm. So now this, this is the part where it's going to get unscripted because we thought we were going to have a little bit more time uh, in between uh, the, the preaching and, and, and the, uh, the special numbers. But I, I, think, uh, I think with Jethro's uh, skill, I think he could do it. I, I think Conrad can do it too. So it's all on him. 
but yeah. Uh, <laughs> but before we go on, uh, I do want to just uh, uh, speak uh, to our online audience. Uh, we're so happy that you're able to join us today. Uh, we're going to end this part of yeah, the Yeah, because we're going to do something that's not um, safe, safe safe online. Safe. So <laughs> we're going to do some live burn offerings. So <laughs> we're going to see you. Uh, but we do, we do hope and pray for the day that you get to join us here live. Uh, you should see the, the people here. Uh, you, you'd be happy uh, to, to be here with us. But uh, we, we'll pray for you. We hope to see you again next week. And that's it. Amen. Uh, we'll, we'll see you guys. Thank you. <laughs>